I'm going to show you how to use the vernier setup to do the experiments we're going to do with gases in class. So this is kind of your startup screen and you're going to hook up two things to it. So for one of the experiments you're going to be doing with temperature. So we're just going to take a regular temperature probe and like this. And this gets plugged into any of the ports. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in channel two off on the sides. And when I do that, you're going to see this change and it's going to bring up the temperature. And I'm also going to take the gas pressure sensor, plug that in. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you do. And then it's going to give me two. Channel one was the pressure, channel two is the temperature. And I have the temperature, or I'm sorry, the pressure hooked up to this. So this currently is just a, an Erlenmeyer flask that is hooked up to my sensor here. And on here, this will close or open this to the atmosphere. So I'm going to go ahead and close this so that all of the gas inside of here and in the tubing is giving me the pressure on this and nothing else. So right now, this is giving me the pressure inside of that flask. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and show you how to give you that in a graph form at various temperatures. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to where it says mode time based. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to go from time base to events with entry. I'm going to hit OK. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play. And that's giving me the pressure and the temperature. I want to be looking at the pressure and temperature graph. So I'm going to change the temperature and do the pressure. As this is going, it's only going to record a data point when you tell it to. So right now, I have a temperature and pressure of a gas. So I'm going to hit this little button at the bottom here that says keep, not the stop, but the one that's got the little blue and white center. Okay, And that's going to then have me type in what the particular temperature or pressure is. So for this, I want to do keep, and I'm going to type in the temperature, which is currently 21.4. So I'm going to type into here, maybe. Point four, like that, and then I'm going to hit OK. Now I have a data point. What I'm going to do now is now that this is sealed, I'm going to take this and this and put these both into different environments. So first, I'm going to take this over to a cold water bath and put that inside of it. And ideally you want to get this gas to be that same temperature as that, so you're going to let it sit for a little bit. It's going to take some time to get to that point. And when you've done this for long enough, and you're satisfied that both the temperature and the temperature of the gas inside and the temperature of the water are the same, then you're going to go ahead and hit keep again. So currently my temperature reading is 11.8. I'm going to hit keep. I'm going to type in 11.8. Hit OK. So now I have my two data points. So now I'm going to do the opposite end of the spectrum. I'm going to bring over some warm water. I'm going to take this out of here. Gonna do it. I'm just going to pour a little bit of the cold water in with the warm water. And then I'm going to later put it into hot water and I'm going to try and get five different data points. So again, currently that is cold. I want that to sit for long enough until it gets to the point where I'm confident that the temperature has equilibrated. And when I get to that point, let's see, currently I'm showing a temperature of a little under 40 degrees. I'm going to make sure that I get as much contact with that gas inside of there as I can. Okay, and probably not quite there yet, but let's go ahead and keep. So we're going to write down 39.7 for our temperature. Okay, so now I've got my three data points, 
And I'm looking in particular at the pressure and temperature. So here's the first temperature, second, and third, and the first pressure, second pressure, and third. Now I'm going to take my hot water, which is in here, just getting close to boiling. And I want the gas to again get to a point where I'm pretty confident that the gas itself is the same temperature as the reading on this particular thing. So now I'm looking up 80 something degrees. So you can read the temperature right here. My pressure has changed as well. And I want to wait. And really, a good way to do this would be to kind of track this pressure and see when the pressure stops changing. Um, but for video purposes, I'm going to not sit here forever. We're going to call this a day at some point. So we'll just be off by a little bit so that you don't lose your attention span. Oh, I guess I should check the temperature. So 86 degrees is our temperature. Okay, so now I have four data points. If I wanted a fifth, what I would do is I would just mix some of the two uh, solutions two of the waters together with the warm and the hot and get one that's kind of in the middle of those two. Now I want to be able to go through and analyze the graph. So I'm going to go to analyze, actually I'm not, let's see, first I need to hit stop. Then I'm going to go to analyze and I want to do a curve fit. I want to get a line of best fit. Now I want the graph that is the pressure versus temperature one, that's this blue one. And I want a linear function. And then that will give me then what the equation of that line is. And you can see that I've got good fit on this particular graph. And it gives me y equals mx plus b. It gives me the slope and it gives me the intercept. And that would then be the equation, the result that I'm looking for. So that would be what you would go ahead and whiteboard and put together to present to the class. Pressure versus temperature. Here I'm going to show you how to do the volume and pressure experiment. Um, so this is my Vernier uh, LabQuest 2. And the equipment I'm going to be using is I'm going to have a single gas pressure sensor. I'm going to hook up my syringe to it. These are very fragile, so do not feel the need to impressively tighten them. Uh, and also when you're handling them, don't handle the pressure with one hand and the syringe with the other because you'll probably produce enough torque to break these. Um, you want to be strategic about how you start. So in this, I would recommend starting probably at a roundish number and somewhere in the middle so you can do both expansion and contraction for the volume. So I'm going to go ahead and hook that up. I'm not going to over tighten or anything crazy. So to get this to function in the way you want, you want to go from time-based mode to events with entry. And we're going to do the volume manually put VOL there, I don't know what that is. So when I hit play now, this is going to allow me to figure out what the pressure is inside of here um, at each given volume. So I'm starting at 10 milliliters for my syringe here. So if I hit the keep button down here, I can type in that the volume is 10 milliliters and then it will plot that for me, the pressure and the volume. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the volume by pulling back on the syringe until it gets to 15. And then I'm going to hold it. I'm going to let the pressure stabilize. Make sure I'm at the right volume. And then I'm going to hit keep. Once you hit keep, you can go ahead and let go. And you're going to type in 15 milliliters what the pressure is. This might be a two-person job. It might be helpful. And notice again that when I'm doing this, I'm pulling on the syringe only. I'm not pulling on the cap. I'm not pulling on the sensor and the syringe. So again, I'm going to take this back to 20 now. So there's my syringe. And I'm going to wait for my pressure to stabilize here. And then I'm going to hit keep. And I can let it go. And I can put in that it was at 20 milliliters. Now I'm going to go ahead and push it in the other direction. I'm going to push it down to 5. I'm going to hit keep. I'm going to type in 5. So this is now plotting my pressure and volume for me. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this down to 7. Do. Keep. Type in 7. Now if you go too far down, 
you're going to run into trouble where this has a maximum pressure detection it can get to, and that's a little over 200 kilopascals. I think it's 224. So if I go way, way down on this, this is eventually going to hit a point. There it is, 224. It's 225 essentially. No matter how much I change it beyond that, it's not going to matter. Okay. So let's go ahead and take that. So then you hit stop, and then if you want to go to analyze, you can go to curve fit, select your graph, and for this one, I'm going to go to power, and that gives me AX to the B power. Okay, so I have 843.93X to this power, negative 0.92683. Okay, and that's the curve that fits that data. Okay, now, if you wanted to then go through and you wanted to figure out what one divided by the volume would be, you can go through and you can change each of these from 10 to 1 divided by 10, which is 0.1. And I can click on that, and I can do that for each of these, plug those in, and then I can re-graph that with that and get a different um, function for that as well if you want to do 1 divided by volume versus pressure. So for our final experiment set up here, we got my LabQuest 2, and I have a gas pressure sensor. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up this apparatus to it. So I'm going to take this and secure it on here. I'm going to be very cautious not to exert too much torque on this, because I don't want that to break. And then I'm going to plug this end into my Erlenmeyer flask securely. And this is now reading the pressure inside of this. And then currently, I have this blue thing here is parallel to the opening. That's allowing air to go in and out, so it's open to the atmosphere. If I close this, then that's going to seal this off, and now I have a closed system. What you're going to do on this is you're going to add air to this, where you're going to take your syringe and put so much of air. So we're going to put 5 milliliters of air, or 4 milliliters of air, or 3 or whatever. Okay. So, I want to go to where it says mode and time base. Let me scoot in here. So where it says time base for mode, I'm going to take that and change that to events with entry. And that way I can get a plot of this. And for events, name, I'm going to put puffs. Done. And OK. So I'm going to hit play. And that's going to allow me then to start tracking what the pressure is as I put more and more things in. So to start, this is the starting pressure. I'm going to hit keep. And I'm actually going to put in that I've put in zero puffs. Okay. Now I'm going to get a puff ready. So I'm going to take three milliliters. And I'm going to hook it up to my apparatus. I'll zoom out so you can see. Okay. So once this is securely attached, I'm going to open it. And then I'm going to push that puff in. And while holding it down so it can't go back, I'm going to release, take that off, and now my pressure should have changed. So I'm going to hit keep, and I'm going to put in that I put in one puff. Okay. So I'm going to keep doing that. Let me zoom in so you can kind of see this. So I'm going to do another three milliliters. I'm going to attach my syringe. Once it's attached, I'm going to open, push it in, close, detach. Now I have two puffs in. So I'm going to hit keep again. Type in two. And I'm going to do another puff. I'm going to attach my syringe. Open. Puff. Closed. Detach. So as I'm doing this, the pressure should be changing as I put more and more puffs of air in and I'm now starting to get a graph. So I'm going to stop there. You can continue on, although eventually this may pop out from having so much pressure. And I can go to Analyze, and then where it says Curve Fit, I can select my pressure, and then I can choose a line of best fit. Now for this one, I'm going to choose Linear, and it gives me a Y equals MX plus B. My slope is 1.9935, my intercept 99.84, and then that gives me my line of best fit for puffs of air versus pressure.